LA this week. Pershing Square's ice rink is open for the holiday season. I'm Gil Reyes with details next. I'm Anna Marcos. Come to the LA Zoo lights and see all the wild new animal light displays. That's coming up. I'm Saida Pagan in Van Nuys, where I'll show you how this school garden will help kids learn anything from science to math and even English. I'll have that story coming right up. Hey everyone, I'm Yana Kay. Here's what's happening on LA This Week. The first of three bridge homes in Council District 15 just opened. The goal is to get people who are experiencing homelessness off the streets and on the path of permanent housing. Anita Bennett has more. Over the next few weeks, about 100 homeless men and women in Watts will go from living on the streets to living in this bridge home. I'm homeless, I live in a car. And, you know, and it's parked in front of my mom's house. It's, I live there. But Alfonso Aviña won't be homeless much longer. He's scheduled to move into this bridge housing project on Imperial Highway. Three, two, one. City leaders, including Mayor Eric Garcetti and Councilman Joe Buscaino, who represents the area, attended the grand opening. This is number nine of 26 shelters, bridge home projects that will be done by next June 30th. Think about that, 2,000 beds, 26 projects. And those projects are desperately needed. According to the latest homeless count, about 36,000 people are experiencing homelessness across the city. Among the contributing factors are high rents, joblessness, and substance abuse. This bridge home will help address some of those issues. This is a temporary housing meant to get people off the streets into the system and help them with whatever services they need to get back on their feet. In fact, this is the only bridge home site that's going to have a job placement center, thanks to the housing authority. Other services will be provided as well. The Salvation Army, we're playing the role of provider, and our role is to do case management services for each individual, to uh, look at their specific needs, whether it might be mental health, or adult uh, or alcohol and drug rehabilitation needs. While here, residents will have access to a pet area, there are laundry facilities and showers. In here is the men's area. Each resident will have a place to keep their personal belongings. There's also a bed for everyone to sleep at night. And on the side of the bed, there's an area for them to charge their phones. It's warm in here and I'm told it will be secure because the LAPD will be providing security. For Alfonso, this area will give him peace of mind. It's like it brightened up my whole day. I feel like I feel like God is just blessing me left and right, you know. The other two bridge homes coming to City 15 will be located in San Pedro and Wilmington. Transgender women living on the street now have a safe place to sleep as city officials open the first ever bridge housing project specifically dedicated to the trans community. Today, we say to our trans community as we have now for years, we see you, you are us and part of this city, and we will bring you home. Today is a momentous occasion for this great city of Los Angeles. We basically opened the first ever publicly funded enhanced bridge housing for transgender women, a very vulnerable population. Many of the shelters aren't always necessarily trans friendly. Many of them get attacked, many of them are assaulted at these shelters, so a place like this would be more firming and safe. And we're just so grateful that we have a home now for our community. If they decide they want to find work or go back to school, this will allow and provide an opportunity for that to happen for them. I'm so proud to be here with people that I care about and I respect. I'm so happy for the 16 women who now have a home. Kids are our future. That's why city officials are supporting a new citywide strategy to make sure young people are equipped with the necessary skills to succeed. Are we ready to fight for more funding for our youth? Yeah! Today
today is a conversation with a coalition of youth activists and parents who want to make sure that the city is being responsive in providing significant opportunities for our youth but making meaningful investments that are going to assure their success. Right now we have 26 different departments that have funding dedicated to youth programs and not a centralized department that manages to provide any oversight, uh, evaluation, and to assure the efficacy of the investments that we are making in our youth. It is absolutely necessary that youth have positive role models. In youth development programs, they can find their guidance they have been searching for. We are the future, so why not invest in a youth development department? Our age does not limit us, and we are capable of creating that change. It is our responsibility to pave the way for our youth and to give them the tools that they need to succeed. Muchísimas gracias. If you are a small business owner, then you know how challenging it can be to expand and grow. But there's plenty of help out there to help you succeed. A recent small business gathering in Reseda helped owners connect and network with a variety of service providers. Bloomform is a, is a product of my community action team, which is a volunteer group of over 40 businesses that come together regularly and we figure out how we can take action to make a better business environment in the third district and throughout the city of Los Angeles. We've invited small businesses from the West Valley to come here and to hear from presentations from organizations that nonprofits, for profit, and uh, businesses that provide consulting services for small businesses. So glad to be here uh, to let the community know, specifically entrepreneurs, business owners, and those that are thinking about starting a business, that they do have a resource that they can come to. This event was really, really important to me because not only am I a business owner, but I'm a business advocate. And to see my fellow business owners grow and thrive right here in our West Valley community is a passion that's near and dear to my heart. Our responsibility and part of our DNA with Clark Construction to um, look for local and small businesses to help us as trade partners on our big projects. So we're here to you know, spread the good word, learn more about the community and marketplace, and look to do business with local and small businesses. This was one of my first events to go to and participate with for Clark on behalf of Clark, and I was thrilled with the turnout. I was thrilled with the turnout, I was thrilled with the, the feedback and the interaction. It, I don't think it could have gone better. How do you get more people to use public transportation? How do you fight climate change? How can you use technology to improve our quality of life? Well, these were the questions asked at a recent Global Street Summit as experts and city leaders gathered to share ideas and come up with solutions. Thank you for joining us in our first Global Street Summit. Our new mission in Streets LA is enhancing the quality of life for all. It's not just about fixing streets and potholes and sidewalks, it's making people's lives better. We all share many of these same challenges in our communities, whether it's climate change or more severe weather, aging infrastructure, limited funding, uh, bad air quality, more congestion. Metro is trying to double their transit users by 2040. We need to work together to figure out how we can provide shade, provide transit shelters. So it takes collaboration, it takes partnerships to move us forward. My vision for LA and what I hope all of you have a vision for your respective cities is, you know, how do we make the city of the future, how do we make it serve our public better? In order to do that, we need to harness the technologies that are out there. We need to think innovatively and differently of, of how we can make these things happen. And, and we're trying to lead in LA. Many people are hungry, crying, demanding for an alternative to being stuck in a single occupancy vehicle here in Los Angeles. And so as we are combating climate change and trying to come up with streets and a public works program, that is cleaner and greener and more sustainable. 
We're also trying to find a way to use our existing roads, that very limited real estate, to come up with a transportation system that is more fair, that is more accessible, that is more safe, that is more efficient, and that is more equitable than the one we have had for a long time. Ah, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp. Or what's a heaven for? Or what's a city for? Let's join hands today and let's work together to reach beyond our grasp to make our communities safe, our communities better. Community leaders and activists came together to rally for the rights of all immigrants and commemorate how California overcame Proposition 187, a 1994 ballot initiative that would have prohibited immigrants who lacked proper immigration documentation from receiving state services. I want everybody to take today as a reminder of what can happen if we don't use the power of our activism and our vote. Today is the 25th anniversary of Prop 187. It's the day that God knows what would have happened to the Latino population had it gone through. It awoke a sleeping giant. The Latino communities across the state of California woke up because we were not going to just sit idly by and let 187 happen. During the effort with Prop 187, we saw some of the most vicious anti-immigrant behavior uh, our state has ever seen. And we find ourselves reliving history, so it's important for us to remember how we overcame. Look, I don't think there's a threat that there could be another 187 in the future. I think we're living through one right now. My dad was a farm worker. My mother was a housekeeper. I was born in Juarez, Mexico. I was uh, deported at the age of five. I became a council member, now I'm a state senator. Get engaged, uh, go register to vote, and more importantly, vote. No matter who you're voting for, you have to come out and vote. So thank you, Pitt Wilson, because of you, I am now the first deported senator in the state legislature's history. There's always gonna be individuals trying to uh, limit uh, our mobility and restrict things from us. Uh, we have always defeated those efforts and we will continue to do so. Muchas gracias, thank you so much, and let's keep fighting. LA City Council approves to expand services for those living on Skid Row. Kids near Pan Pacific Park get a new playground to play in, and Central Avenue in Watts is getting a major facelift. All this in City Beat. The LA City Council has voted to spend $2.2 million in state funds to expand services for those experiencing homelessness in Skid Row. Authored by Councilmember Jose Huizar, the two approved motions will see the allocation of money to such services as rapid rehousing, expanded access to showers and restrooms, and other social services. The Department of Rec and Parks and Councilmember David Roos celebrated the grand opening of a brand new playground at Pan Pacific Park Recreation Center. The new playground is part of an ongoing upgrades and renovations project at the Rec Center. Recent upgrades include an updated baseball field and a new soccer field. A groundbreaking recently took place for the Central Avenue Streetscape Project. This facelift will include designing and installing of medians, curb extensions and planting of trees in addition to repairs of curbs, sidewalks, and gutters. All this is taking place on Central Avenue from 97th Street to Imperial Avenue in Watts. Regardless of where you live in the city, regardless of your economic status, that everyone deserves equal, fair, and just uh, resources, and this is what we're doing here today. Students at one Van Nuys Elementary School are getting a unique opportunity to learn about math science, and other subjects in a one-of-a-kind outdoor learning laboratory. It's called the Project Learning Garden. Saida Pagan was there as the garden was planted. Understanding how food grows, sustainability, and the value of teamwork. These are the lessons students at Sylvan Park Elementary School will be getting as part of Project Learning Garden. 
It was all made possible thanks to the Captain Planet Foundation, based on the animated series, along with community partners, Bayarna supermarkets, and Dole Packaged Foods. Is everybody excited about this? Yeah! The students got great hands-on experience building plant beds and learning how to prepare soil for planting lettuce, peppers, and other vegetables. It's an amazing garden, and it's really great, and I'm having fun with it. Sylvan Park Elementary was one of only two Los Angeles schools to get this environmental education grant. This project is designed to teach kids more than just about agriculture. These students will be learning about math and science and even writing through the lens of gardening. Measurement comes in also when we're talking about colors and shapes and history and uh, just finding ways to integrate the garden into the instruction that they're already charged with teaching. They need to learn the lessons of, you know, fruits and vegetables and the things that they consume on a daily basis just don't happen. It takes a lot of hard work, it takes perseverance, a lot of love. Project Learning Garden also teaches children about good nutrition. So this is going to be so great when they do come up to uh, pull them out and really make a salad and have them taste different vegetables. I think it's going to be awesome. A lot of kids are ready. Yeah, because vegetables are good and they're also nice for you. They're healthy. Over the next several years, this learning garden will be used by the school's nearly 1,000 students. The ultimate goal is to help them become part of the next generation of informed and empowered citizens who can better manage the Earth's resources. The Captain Plant Foundation has served more than a million children through its programs. For more information, go to CaptainPlanetFoundation.org. Folks came out to support our local firefighters and their families during a golf tournament. Proceeds benefit the LA City Fire Foundation, which helps support firefighter families in their time of need. A lot of people reach out and they want to know what they can do for firefighters or donate and, and they do and, and where does that money go we don't we don't really know and now we can make sure that that money goes to firefighters and the fam and the families that are in need. Proud to be here to support the firefighter foundation. Through the foundation, we can support their efforts to help their members, help their families, and reinvest in the community. So to be able to give back to a foundation that's going to support their own is really, from our end, very easy to do, because what they do is the hard part. Lace up your skates for a night on the ice, or a day for that matter. As Gil Reyes reports, the Pershing Square Holiday Ice Rink has opened to kick off the holiday season. Beneath blue skies and towering skyscrapers, LA City's largest outdoor ice rink returns, signaling the start of the holidays in downtown LA. I love this. This is the best thing to hit Los Angeles. We're the first kids on the ice. It's a really good opportunity. You can have fun with your friends. And it's strange that it's in Los Angeles because, it's, you know, it's sunny. Buy Holiday Ice Rink returns to downtown's Pershing Square for its 22nd season. Besides daily skating, get ready for DJ nights, festivals, and concerts to help fill you with cheer well past the new year. I know people that have been coming here for years with their family uh, and I don't know there's something romantic about this ice rink because I know there's been over a hundred proposals on this ice. Rumor has it we're going to do our first wedding this year. Three, two, one! But first, an icebreaker hosted by the LA Department of Rec and Parks, filled with all kinds of wintry wonder. This opening ceremony included Olympic figure skating champions. Wow, look at that. Also, Snoopy strutting his stuff, courtesy of Knott's Berry Farm. Story, 
The cast of Disney's Frozen the Broadway Musical also wowed the crowd gathered at Pershing Square, one of LA's oldest public parks. At LA City Parks, we're so proud of these spaces and we want the public to come out and enjoy them because they are their parks. They're their backyards, their gathering places, uh, the places to come and relax. Starting in February, Pershing Square will undergo a multi-year renovation to add new landscaping and a dog park. Construction means this will likely be the rink's final season for a while. We're still going to have our wonderful summer concerts this summer because the first phase will not interfere with that. Uh, we're going to try our best to keep some sort of programming going, uh, but uh, at this point, the ice cream for next year is probably off the table. Enjoy it while you can. At 7,200 square feet, it's the largest outdoor ice rink in the city of L.A. More than 54,000 skaters visit every year. In its six years of existence, it's become a holiday tradition for many Angelinos. And this year, the L.A. Zoo Light Show at the L.A. Zoo has some wild and beastly new light exhibits you won't want to miss. Anna Marcos takes us there. Boy, are you in for a big surprise when you come to visit the LA Zoo Lights. Because this year there are all kinds of brand new animal light sculptures like you've never seen before. They are all over the zoo. And for the next seven weeks, you can be one of the quarter million people to come in and take in the sights and the lights. The LA Zoo has turned on its yearly holiday lights with a bang. More than 500,000 LED lights to be exact, and there's reason for all the fanfare. For example, this new animal light show near the entrance. The world's largest illuminated pop-up storybook. And we actually um, were going to register with the Guinness Book of World Records. They made it in Italy, and they shipped it over in pieces, assembled it for us, and now it's ours. And with all the glowing frogs, alligators, and other wild things, it's drawing a lot of oohs and ahs from the visitors. Oh, you mean the animals that oh. light up? Yeah, we saw them. I Those like the tiger. I, I like the cheetah. If there was a cheetah, I think there was, because my dress is cheetah print. Oh, so it'll match your dress. I really like flamingos, so I was looking at the flamingo cages and on the grass it had like statues and skeletons of flamingos with lights around it. I like the tiger one because I kind of like tigers. The Gay Man's Choir of LA's a cappella group Aftershock helps celebrate the zoo's bigger, newer and improved light show. Also on hand, American Idol finalist Kimberly Caldwell LAFC soccer player Jordan Harvey, and Fox 11's Julie Chang. And guess who else will be hanging around the zoo all season? Santa. He's got his own Santa cabin for greeting kids, both naughty and nice. We have this beautiful outdoor environment that allows for this um, connection with your family and your friends while you are looking at these amazing light shows and being transformed. You'll still find the big time favorites like the Twinkle Tunnel. Only this year it's gotten, well, twinklier. Why I like the tunnel? Because there's a lot of lights and it's pretty. I like the one that's over there. That's a disco ball. That's over there when you're coming through that part. The LA Zoo lights will continue to glow, shine, and twinkle from now until January 5th. It's Christmas in, in Los Angeles. You know, we don't get all the, the snow, so we get these lights. To find out more, go to lazoolights.org. Underserved kids interested in a music career were treated to a free music industry career fair where they got to meet some industry heavyweights and learn what it takes to break in. I can truly be myself with music. I can't wait to see what comes out of this.
We are here at the Wiltern Theater for the All Access Fest. This is Music Forward's industry career fair, ensuring that all young people have access into the industry, spark discovery around jobs, and be able to start charting their own stories and pathways into the future. It's good to have connections and know people. And they said there would be like job fairs, so I would be able to see colleges and opportunities. today, sparking things for yourselves and starting to chart your own stories here in the music industry. Grab the family and get ready for the next Ciclavia. Enjoy the magic and wonder of the LA Zoo Lights and take in a family-friendly concert at Union Station. All this and things to do. The LA Zoo wants to get you and the family in the holiday spirit. Join other Angelinos as you walk through the entire zoo after sunset and take in the holiday decorations. There's food, drinks, and plenty of great photo opportunities. Bring the family and enjoy zoo lights. You'll also get to see the world's largest illuminated pop-up storybook. Zoo Lights runs nightly at the LA Zoo now through January 5th. For more info, visit lazoo.org. Looking for a family-friendly concert? Well, look no further because Union Station has the perfect concert for the whole family. Come and enjoy the Winter Wonderland theme with some Santa selfies, holiday-themed arts and crafts, and interactive games. The fun starts at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, December 6th. There will also be a musical guest and free cocoa. For more info, visit unionstationla.com. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield invites you to join him for Ciclavia The Valley, a family-friendly event to open up Sherman Way from Canoga Park through Winnetka and into Reseda for a five-mile stretch of open streets. Bring your friends to bike, skateboard, run, or walk Sherman Way with Councilmember Blumenfield, taking place on December 8th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. To learn more, visit ciclavia.org. And that's a look at some things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more of LA This Week.